Our Halloween haunts are usually based on the supernatural. Ghouls, zombies, vampires, sexy kittens. But the scariest monsters of all are the ones found in the natural world, cannibals. Consistent reports from witnesses to the effect that people who acted as though they were in a kind of trance were killing and eating their victims prompted authorities to examine the bodies of some of the victims. Dinner time is happy time for this family. In all cases, the killers are eating the flesh of the people they murdered. Hi, I'm Jess Keating, and you're watching Animal Logic Second Nature. The natural world is filled with animals whose feeding strategies rely on eating members of their own species. These are nature's best cannibals. Cannibalism is seen in a wide variety of species, from those who look the part to those who don't. While nature may hold no moral judgment on cannibalistic species, that doesn't mean that cannibalism doesn't have its negatives. Civil defense authorities have told newsmen that murder victims show evidence of having been partially devoured by their murderers. First of all, disease. It is much easier to get sick from a member of your own species than another species. So eating your cousin increases your chances of contracting a disease. We'll be ready to eat as soon as father comes home. My, I hope he's not late, don't you? Secondly, the most common victims of cannibalism are youth. And if you eat your own offspring, your genes won't be passed on. How soon do we eat? Right now, says mother. Smart cannibals will avoid eating their own children and instead cook up their neighbor's kid with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. For example, paper wasps and tiger salamanders have been seen to be less likely to eat relatives, whom they can identify via smell. Similarly, spadefoot toads will avoid eating their siblings by hanging out in areas with a high density of unrelated toads. The paper wasp is an exception, however. Most invertebrates rarely recognize kin and will devour members of their own species, relative or no. Wave of murder which is sweeping the eastern third of the nation is being committed by creatures who feast upon the flesh of their victims. One big advantage of cannibalism is that it gives you an extra food source when times get tough. Snowy egrets and many rodents, rabbits, and shrews will cannibalize the weakest of their babies in long winters and in times of scarcity. Fish, on the other hand, don't really care about the time of year. They'll eat their tasty, nutritious young whenever they need a meal. They will even eat their own eggs. When males are guarding their eggs, they will pop one or two back when they need a snack, and if they're really hungry, they'll wolf the whole brood down. There are many things that you can do to help yourselves from becoming victims. Well, if you let me take you to school, I'll give you this pretty little dolly. Okay. All right, darling, come on. Cichlids, for example, will put their babies in their mouths for protection. This may look cute, but oftentimes they will swallow, eating their entire family in one gulp. Some shark species, like the sand tiger shark, practice in utero cannibalism. These sharks' eggs hatch in their mom's oviducts. Once hatched, the stronger pup will eat the other, eventually giving them the strength of a full-grown shark and a little baby. Though it's not always parents feeding on the babies, sometimes it's the other way around. These are cannibal babies. Black lace spiders, for example, might just be the best mothers on the planet. They will care for their spiderlings for a few days after they hatch, but soon after, the babies will need a lot of food in order to build up energy to molt. So the mother sacrifices herself, allowing her babies to devour her alive. In some snail species, they practice sibling cannibalism. Rock snails will lay hundreds of eggs, but only about 15 ever hatch. The ones that do hatch will make the unhatched eggs their first meal. These snails are born unable to digest their adult vegan diet, 
So until they acquire the necessary gut bacteria, they cannibalize their siblings. Conversely, spadefoot toads begin their journey as vegetarian tadpoles. But as they grow and develop, they become cannibalistic, eating the younger tadpoles. These tadpoles eat their own kind because their ponds can dry up quickly and suddenly, so they either grow fast or die. Anything that can help them grow as quickly as possible and climb out of the volatile pond as toads is a huge help. This is the biggest advantage to eating members of your own family. You can get a lot of energy in a short amount of time, allowing you to grow and reproduce and pass your genes on to the next generation. I guess, just like in humans, the first suspects are always your family. Polar bears are of the most famous infanticidal cannibals. Cubs are part of a balanced breakfast for an adult male polar bear. While there has been speculation that it's climate change that has forced them into cannibalization, polar bears have always been cold, hard cannibals. Probably the most misunderstood form of cannibalism is sexual cannibalism. There is no more deadly or voracious creature than the praying mantis. You've probably heard that black widows and praying mantises both devour their mates after sex. While it can happen, it's not nearly as common as you may think. And the notion is based on bad science. When they conducted the study that found that female mantises eat males after mating, they had starved the females for several days prior. In natural conditions, both mantises and black widows are quite comfortable with males not being dead after mating. That said, if either female is hungry, she will bite his head off. Usually, she does not attack the male as he tries to secure her with his own ineffective web. Only when prompted by strong hunger does the black widow kill and eat the male after mating. The real sexual cannibals are the Australian redbacks. When mating, the male spider will go on top and put his abdomen near the female's mouth. During the act, the female will bite into his body for a little snack. If the male survives, he may return for a second round. But no male has ever gone more than two rounds and lived to spin the tail. This is another good example of spiders being great parents. The male is sacrificing himself for the chance of producing better eggs. Several mammals will cannibalize a mother's young as a mating strategy. Seen in both chimpanzees and lions, dominant males will kill and often eat all the female's cubs, as it causes the mother to come into estrus soon after, allowing her to bear his cubs much sooner. Nothing turns a woman on like eating her babies in front of her. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. They did eat every herb of the land. Mormon crickets practice cannibalism due to overcrowding. They move in giant swarms, devouring all the food sources in their path. Often, there isn't enough food to support the entire swarm, and so members are left with no choice but to eat each other. Factory farm chickens will exhibit similar behaviors if they are packed too closely together, turning to cannibalism out of stress. They will peck each other to death and cannibalize the corpse. Stress will also force a bout of cannibalism on the cutest cannibalistic species, the hamster. If a hamster gets too stressed out, often caused by small cages with nowhere to hide, they will eat their pups. Mothers will also cannibalize their young if they are sick, dead, or if there are just too many of them. But it's not just the babies that get eaten. Sometimes adults of the same sex, if placed in the same cage, will fight to the death, and the winner will feast on the carcass of the loser. Thankfully, they don't usually cut off the face of their victim and wear it around. Usually. I caused a good part of the trouble by not having dinner on time. That does it. So what should we talk about next? Please let us know in the comments, and as always, don't forget to subscribe for new episodes of Animalogic Second Nature every other week. Thanks for watching. Oh, I almost died.